Let's talk about J-Beam. This isn't a film review, so if you're looking for one, head over to the Newsman website instead. This is about J-Beam and the latest controversy featuring the political party, the PMK. Now, the film starring actor Surya has received high praise from both fans and critics. It's even become the highest rated film on IMDb, surpassing Hollywood classics like Shawshank Redemption, The Godfather and The Dark Knight. That's quite a feat. But there are a few haters for the film, including Anbhumani Ramdas and his party, the PMK. So why is Anbhumani offended? And what exactly about the film has offended the PMK so much? I'll give you the lowdown. Before we dive into that, a quick reminder that videos like this take time, effort and resources. We cannot do this without your support. So do become a member of the News Minute community by clicking on the link in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Alright, I'll do a quick summary of J-Beam for those of you who haven't watched the film. It was directed by TJ Nyanavale and released on November 2nd on Amazon Prime. The film is based on a real-life story of a tribal man, Raja Kanna, who was falsely framed in a theft case by police officers. He died after being brutally assaulted in police custody. The film shows his wife's struggle for justice and the legal battle fought by retired Madras High Court Judge Justice K. Chandru in the 1990s. So a few days after the film released, Anmuni Ramdas, who is a former Union Health Minister and a PMK leader, put out a four-page letter to Surya. I'll give you the condensed version. Anbhumani said that Jay Beam insulted the Vanyar community, which he is a part of and which his party, the PMK, caters to. For those of you who don't know, the Vanyar community is categorized as most backward in Tamil Nadu. They also have political clout in a few districts. So Anbhumani complained that Jay Beam retained the original names of a few characters in the film, including the tribal man, the lawyer, and the inspector general who headed the probe. But it changed the real name of the sub-inspector who was actually accused of the crime of beating up Raja Kanna to death from Anthony Sami to Guru Murthy. So in his letter, Anbhumani questioned why the makers of the film deliberately changed the name to Guru Murthy. He also wanted to know why they repeatedly referred to the character as Guru. Incidentally, Guru is also the name of a PMK leader who died back in 2018. But that's not all. Anbhumani complained that in one scene of the film where Sub-Inspector Guru Murthy is shown talking on the phone, a calendar in the background featured the Agni Kalasam, which is a symbol of the Vanir Sangam. As a result, the film seemed to suggest that Guru Murthy belonged to the Vanir community. So Surya responded to Anbhumani by saying that the team had no intention of hurting anyone in the community. But after the issue broke out, they digitally altered the calendar featured in the film, replacing the Agni Kalasam with a picture of the goddess Lakshmi. As far as the name Guru Murthy goes, Surya said that it was actually indicative of another community, but he did not want to play a guessing game and politicize the issue further. He also pointed out that J-Beam is a feature film and not a documentary, and that the movie actually came with several disclaimers right at the very beginning. Director Nyanavil also responded to the controversy, saying that the picture of the Agni Kalasam is in fact an oversight and that as soon as the matter came to his notice, he changed it. He also said that the people of Tamil Nadu are very tolerant towards opinions that are to the contrary and it is only those who support caste groups who find the film problematic and do not like it. Now, Surya has been given police protection in Chennai and rightly so. There's still more. The Vanyar Sangam issued a legal notice to Surya and Yanavail seeking 5 crore rupees in damages. They also asked that those behind the film cease and desist from making or publishing any false or defamatory remarks against the Vanyar community. The South India Film Chamber of Commerce has come out in full support of Surya and has also asked Anbhumani to not criticise him. The Tamil film industry has also backed the star. So that's where the issue stands at the moment. Of course, J Beam is hardly the first film to run into trouble with political groups. Karnan, Sarkar, Vishwarupam are just a few. We'll have to wait and see how the J Beam Rao plays out. But for now, tell us what you think about the controversy in the comment section.